So after the Jean-Claude Van Damme uh, game was canceled, is that where you guys really got the inspiration to try and make Johnny Cage the perfect satire on Jean-Claude Van Damme? Actually, um, we already had that uh, uh, Daniel Rad character, Michael Grimm. Okay. But, but since... Uh, when we were filming, John uh, asked me, hey, Ed really likes John claude Van Damme. We, we have to put some moves to, to make fun of him. And I was like, yeah, John, I'm not going to do it. Uh, 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 you know, like like the splits? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> what happens is, yeah, they, he needed me to, to make the game without me because John and Ed don't know my, any martial arts. So without me, there, there's no martial art or fighting game. Yeah. So John was like, John was like, I'll buy you pizza. If you do... These moves, <laughs> I'll, I'll buy you pizza. So basically, I was bri- I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I made fun of John claude Van Damme with the bribery of, of pizza. <laughs> so so d- d- please tell me that like uh, that even like in like the Mortal Kombat movie where like he falls down to like do the splits and then punches Gordo in the balls. That's got to be a rip on Van Damme because every yeah. single Van Damme movie, there's that scene where they're like pulling his legs apart with the ropes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, you you are correct. Uh, that's that's uh, satire of John Claude Van Damme. Oh man, that that's going. I mean, that just makes that character so potent for its time too. You know what I mean? Because I mean, even though uh, even though Liu Kang kind of gets the star treatment, I don't know. I always wanted to play as Johnny Cage. He was always the coolest guy because he's got the sunglasses. You know? Yeah, yeah. He's got the attitude, the sunglasses. You know, he's got the skill set. Yeah, he, it was a fun character to create. So uh, so when you guys were in the creative process, was there any certain um, kind of outlooks, philosophies, or, um, you know, kind of uh, backstory that you wanted to specifically add to certain characters? Um, actually, most of the backstory, John had some light backstory. Like, you know, Kano was a uh, uh, Japanese, half American, half Japanese ninja assassin. Okay. And so... So uh, him and his example, then Rich Divizio Kano would develop that whole personality, kind of walked out and would just, because it was easier for him to just do that as opposed to, no, we didn't really have an idea how to make the game. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, at the beginning, we would tape over moves that we didn't use. So, like, the original footage of making of Mortal Kombat is lost because we taped over that. What? So, yeah, so there's about 60 hours, probably 50 or 60 hours that not, uh, nobody will ever see. Because mm-hmm. uh, in order to save money, we erased that and taped over it to use for, for other things. Yeah. So, when we, we would just start goofing around and making the character. So, you know... Uh, Rich would come out and he'd use his knives. You know, we were we, uh, even for the first game, we all we wanted weapons mm-hmm. in the first game, but we didn't just have the technology to support that. So Rich would use the knives and Rich would make these like gruff, gruff looking. And he 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 is he is really if you watch them work, he is really Kano when he does his stuff. He's he's got that Kano. I know in the movie they added a Australian accent, but uh, but he is the one who they modeled all the other Kanos after. Okay. So was so then Kano was probably you said that was the uh the second or third character. Second character. Okay, okay. So was Kano always um supposed to be, you know, I don't know, the bad guy or uh yeah. what, or or what did uh, kind of the outlaw look come later? No, actually he was always going to be the bad guy of the tournament. Okay. Yeah, because I always viewed him, I mean, you know, Shang Tsung is obviously, you know, the main villain, but I mean, I always viewed Kano as kind of like that wild card, you know what I mean? Like, uh, even, yeah. in, even in the movie, like, uh, there's just something about him that you never really know what he's going to do, he's unpredictable. Yeah, he's always the mercenary. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, you know, again, that whole persona of, of the stuff happened, uh, too, when we were filming, and, and uh, again, to... We would always try to use the, like the best ideas for stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, when we're trying to stuff. We're trying to grow stuff and try to uh, come up with a cool way to do things. 
Wow, that's interesting. So then I guess let me ask you, um, since you really developed all the finishing moves of them, um, which moves did you uh, specifically have input on? Um, as the game grew, I had more input because we wanted to, to make sure, since we're all friends and studied the same uh, uh, martial arts circle, mm -hmm. It, w it was important for each character to look a little bit different. Okay. And since we're all basically from the same style, it was difficult to do. So I was there to kind of make sure that the the conveying of the ideas to make the game was easy and also to be like, oh, somebody's already done that move. We got to change that move. And I would come up with a way to change move. Yeah. So uh, an example is like Sonya's Kiss of Death. You know, how she... Did yeah, you yeah. The kiss of death. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I created that. Okay, so it was, uh, so, yeah, did, so uh, did you, uh, did you originally like, you know, have the idea of like, or uh, have the influence of trying to like put out all those different like special powers and abilities? And uh, I mean, is that like kind of related to uh, certain kind of like martial arts lore? Actually, she is the only female character. And when we were filming, John was like, "Okay, Daniel, we need a Danny. We need a way to." We need a finishing move, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, we got to, we have to do a kiss of death, because she's the only one, and she'll kiss you, and you, and you're, you know, she'll blow you a kiss, and you'll go up in flames." Yeah, yeah. And and, and like that, and like that, and also, um, for the first day of filming uh, Raiden, I wasn't there until much later, uh, just because I was working and uh, at my regular job. Yeah, yeah. And so, but I, but I showed up, and uh, John was like. Man, we're really – he showed me footage and he's like, we're really having a hard time with this. He keeps on losing the hat when he, he does a kip up where you're on your back and you're, you fling your feet up and then you stand up and get into your fighting pose. Right. He's like, the hat – he's like, maybe I can cut and paste the hat on there or I got to figure out how to do it. And then I looked at the footage and I was like, John, he's a god. He doesn't need to do a kip up. Mm -hmm. He just – he can just stand up, teleport up. And John was like, oh, that's a good idea. So uh, I came up with Raiden's Teleport. Uh, so different things throughout the game where we're like, oh, yeah, I, you know, uh, uh, you know, Katana Molina's fatalities, uh, Jax's punching the ground. It mm -hmm. comes from a style of Tai Chi, Chen Tai Chi. So I would just borrow things from there. The way I set up the way Shang Tsung steals the soul. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so different, different things, different aspects. I was like, oh, we got to do this. Or change the way uh, kicks were done, or generate the way kicks are done, or just kind of make sure, like, oh, you can't really that you can't do that move because it won't turn out because it's two D. It, it'll look like a different move, but not quite as cool. Yeah. So you know, so so you know, just trying to to finagle moves. Yeah. So, so did you come up with that move where Raiden just like just dives across the sc the screen, uh, screaming that? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's no, such a cheater move. I love that. I would always play as Raiden in the Super Nintendo version. We had a problem capturing people jumping because what happened was we didn't have professional lighting. So if you jump too high, the top of your head would get darker because the light was overhead and it would shade. Okay. And it would change the shade of your body. So uh, after jumping about 50 times, I was like, John, what if we got the general motion of me jumping and then I sat on something and then you could cut me out? Yeah. Like air, like that. And John's like, oh, that's a good move. So he was like, let's get a chair. And then I was just like, we can't use a chair because it'll look like I'm sitting in a chair. And so I looked around the room and I saw the staircase. And I was like, if I sit on the edge of the staircase, I'll have to balance myself. And it will look like when you take it, it'll look like I'm actually doing the flip. Mm -hmm. So we started using this, this staircase for different moves. If you look at the footage, you'll see us balancing on it, the behind the scene footage. But anyway, uh, John was like, I want you to pretend you're, you're flying at somebody. So I got the staircase out and we put like uh, Carlos on the staircase and, and the first time he was doing it, he laid on it wrong and he squished his nuts <laughs> and he was, and he let it, and he let out this Ooh! like that. And we all started laughing and, and 
we borrowed that. Uh, I think they borrowed that sound for every time he launches himself. <laughs> because when I hear it, I get reminded of him doing that. <laughs> I, I get a reminder of like, oh, oh, that sound. So every time I see it, I get reminded that like, oh, the first time Carlos tried to do that move for for Raiden, he got his balls crushed. Oh, man. I'm going to have to call that move the ball buster from now on. <laughs> hey, yeah. yeah. So uh, so did, so what uh, other moves did you use that staircase for? Did you do it for like the bicycle kicks and stuff as well? Yeah, bicycle kicks or any other uh, jumping technique. Or if we wanted to change the way the guy did a jumping part or jumping kick, mm -hmm. we would try to uh, balance them different ways so they would have like a unique look. So that way every character was a little bit different. So it wasn't like the same cookie cutter character. Right. You know, the, the, all the moves were different. Well, to and, give them their personalities. Well, and, and I think that's what really separated Mortal Kombat from pretty much every other, you know, two-person fighter game that came out in that era was just how individualized each character was, whether it's the look, the backstory, the uh, moveset. Everything's very particular and everything's very different, so you can actually create strategies with certain characters. And then it just, it, then it, that, that's what prevents it from being just a button masher where you're just, you know, throwing random stuff. Like, you know, every character has its own different approach that you can use while playing the game. Yeah, yeah. John, uh, John had some good concepts with, uh, with the way he wanted uh, the different characters and how they would all have different strengths. And we, he, uh, uh Again, when we were kids, we used to play Dungeons and Dragons. So oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a whole strategy about that, about doing that. You know, you have your wizard, you have your ranger, you have, you know, you pull in. Everybody has their a weakness, but everybody has a strength. Yeah. So that's very much in the first game. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, that, what, just that kind of thought that goes into it that you guys had. And I mean, that's what really um, has a game like that stand the, the test of time primarily, you know, as the franchise would grow. So let me ask you then, um, how did you, uh, how did you get Scorpion's move added in there? I mean, did you just uh, bring your rope dart in one day and we're playing with it? Um, actually, we were looking for a fin. Uh, uh, we were looking for a special move and originally, uh, I think it was Ed. He wanted me to hold a lasso over my head and then I would throw at the guy and tie him up. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of like Wonder Woman. I don't know if I really <laughs> want to do that. And, and then, uh, you know, we were, cause we were always goofing around and joking around with each other. And then I was like, there's a weapon Chinese, uh, in, in Chinese martial arts and it's pulled, used to pull horsemen off their horses. Okay. And it's, and it's a long rope with a dagger on it. And you wrap it around your body for centrifugal force, and then you shoot it out, and it goes into somebody, in, in, into the person. So I showed John uh, what it was, and John was like, that looks awesome. We're going to use that. So when I was doing that move, and I was pulling the guy to me instead of, like, get, walking over to the guy tied up and then beating him up, I was, like, pulling him to me, and then Rich DeVizio yelled out, get over here! And he made, like, this <laughs> uppercut gesture. So... So, too, again, a lot of people don't know that Richard DeVizio created or coined the phrase, get over here. Oh, and really? I know Ed does the voice, but he does it exactly like Kano. Yeah. He does it in the Kano voice, get over here. Because that, that's the way Rich did it when we were filming. 